Well, now that we're in Europe, we best start looking at rebuilding the squad. Hello and welcome to part 34 of Unemployed to Unstoppable. Uh, as we've alluded to, we are in Europe now, so we're going to need a slightly bigger squad. We're currently into the transfer window. We've got £64 million to spend. So we best quickly evaluate what we need and then go out and do our best to improve. Looking at the squad depth page, I think it's pretty obvious from what I've seen so far is a new centre forward is probably one of the key areas we need to improve. We've got Padir. Medaliev's in on loan, but he's probably going to leave us very shortly. And Stewart's just not got the, the potential I want moving forward. Most of the other positions in the front three or front four are, are looking pretty good. I would quite like to keep Iglesias in the squad if I can. He's coming up to the end of his contract and we'll do a cheeky little contract offer if we can. Uh, I think we probably need a world-class centre midfielder if we can find one from somewhere. Maybe one more centre-half. Possibly a right-back, although Dan Rose is coming back from loan with high potentials. He might fit in there. And a goalkeeper. Now, the goalkeeper situation is a little bit more sketchy than that because Mamadov has put in a transfer request. He wants to move to a bigger club. I have told him that we won't go anywhere till he meets his minimum release clause, which is £44 million but we don't have anybody as backup cover if he does go. So just in anticipation, we may be leaving before the end of the transfer window. We'll look to get in some players. Um, before I start looking too deep, we have made a few offers. So Dimitri Broers, again, he's a def well, he's down as a defender, but he's more of a midfielder. We've put in an offer of him from Ajax. Um, we've also got Bruno coming in as soon as the contract window turns over in July. So again, we'll get him in. He's cover up front. He's got a huge amount of potential. So if we see where he fits in at the time. Other than that, I think what we're looking for is, to summarise, a striker, a centre mid, a centre half, a goalkeeper, any opportunity for some high potential players, any opportunity for a huge improvement from an existing Premier League player. And then in terms of players out, I think really the only one I'm looking at is Alzate. I mean, if we can get anywhere near 14 million for him, he's only got three star current, three star potential. He's 28 years old. He doesn't really fit full time in our team, and he's one of our highest wage players. So, if we can move him on, I think that's a massive bonus. That all being said, um, I'll click through to the 1st of July, we'll see what we can pick up from the Premier League cast offs, and then we'll get to summarising what our improvements are um, as we get to the end of the window. So. Stay tuned, I'll be back shortly, hopefully with a whole load of signings to take you through. And here we go, the transfer window is complete. Just going through the signings we've made, we brought in Melvin de Pomchel, a young French midfielder. I think mean, initially we brought him in to be a, a friendly face for Mbouma, but Mbouma's throwing his tennis out the cotton wants to leave anyway, so he's... <laughs> Duponchel's kind of become a bit of a redundant signing. Uh, not ideal, we spent eight million on him. He's going to be in and around the, the outskirts of the squad, not really competing for anything too too big. Then we brought in Alex Campbell at centre mid. We've loaned him straight back out to Celtic again. He's a huge potential player. Uh, we'll look to build him as one for the future. He came in for 4.5 million and we've loaned him straight back. So that's not too bad. He'll be one for the future. Going back to Dimitri Boas. He's another one that just came out at tail end last year centre half huge amount of potential he probably slots he's just about first team uh, we spent 3.1 million on him and he's already worth 21 to 24 so he's an investment alone absolutely fantastic so strength at centre half again going into the transfers that we've happened since the turn of the year well the turn of the transfer window brought in Marshall and Bomb as a, a winger slash forward quite a lot of acceleration and pace so he's a, a good young player again and play up top either wing and in that uh, advanced midfielder also again huge amount of potential 2.5 million and again as we can see already estimated at 20 to 29 million so again huge investment property for him bruno brazilian came in on a free transfer from barcelona b get 31 to 36 million already competing for that spot up front with padilla because medelli has come back to his, his home country and his home club now so again, huge prospect, and there's a bit of a theme here with the Brazilians. So Bruno is the first of many. We brought in Rossini for 3.5 million. Again, 
for his potential. Already estimated at 12.5 to 16 million, brought him in for 3.5. So again, there's more profit in the bank there. Gleason, he's one of the ones we're really excited about. He, we had to compete for him to get him um, 45 to 66 million already. He's again competing for one of them slots at the top of the table, at the top of the line with Padilla, but again, he can play right way across the front three. So better on the left, more likely to play up front, but again, extra depth, extra potential and huge potential profits. Cassiano, we brought in as a potential midfielder. He'll be kind of a fringe player this season. I'm reluctant to send him out on loan because we've not got a lot of depth in the center of the park. So again, we'll keep him in there. He's got a lot of um, technique play. He's kind of one of them creative players, but he can play right in the center of midfield. He can play deep if need to, and he can play around. So another good one. Fabio De Santis, we bought from Bologna. Again, we paid a little bit of money for him, 14.5 million to try and strengthen that midfield. Uh, he's really good attribute wise. Again, huge high potential. He'll probably slot in in that advanced midfielder role more often than the central midfielder role. But as you can see, we've brought Bruno Iglesias back from Real Madrid. He was on loan with us last season until he had a horrific injury. We've got him in fairly cheap at 5 million. And again, he's already worth quite a bit of money. So 17 to 21 already. So we're going to have made a profit on him. That all being said, the squad itself is reasonably large. Those of you with a good sharp eye can see that we're starting to run low on the home train players. Rather than buying a new goalkeeper, we've brought Adam Ibrahim up from the young team because he's trained at Nation. We've got Omar Bamadeli. Some are coming up close, so Marvin Watio is not too far away from becoming homegrown. I think I kind of was Manuel Moreno or Vasil Sarmason. Again, they follow in that bracket that they've trained in long enough. They're coming up for trained at trained at club for the three year window so again not looking bad squad depth fantastic across most positions probably still a little bit struggling up top in terms of competing with the top tier striker but actually the rest of the midfield is looking pretty strong the centre halves are looking strong we've got Watio and Mumber at right back we've got Shipley Galvez at left back I have actually let Fazzini go out on loan this season just because I didn't see him getting too much first team football and he needs the game time. So and that is where the squad currently sits. The assistant report is not, not looking too clever to be honest. Not a lot of strengths, huge amount of weaknesses. A lot of them are attribute type weaknesses. And then in terms of the actual preview for the season, 20th of 1000 to 1. Now I think we've improved on last season where we, we crept up slightly higher than that. So unless the rest of the Premier League has bought a huge amount of superstars, I don't see why we're at thousands of one. Now, I've played the first game of the season already. We were playing Man City at home and we got beat 2-0. The reason I did that is because I wanted you to see the opening game of the season to be our first foray into European football. We've got Omanoia from Cyprus, so we'll play that first leg. See if we can get some goals, get a big victory on the, on the sheet to break in the new season. And then after that, I'll play through until we get about a quarter away. So stay tuned. I'll get us through the first game of the season. We'll be giving the debut to a huge number of players. And hopefully we can start this off with a thumping win. Uh, welcome back. So the starting lineup for our first foray into Europe. We've got Mamadov in goals, who wants away. Back four of Galvez, Brewers, Moreno and Matteo. Moreno, another one who wants away. Got a midfield three of Webster, Cassiano, and DeSantis, and then a front three of Rashika, Gleason, and Gobi. So debuts for Gleason, DeSantis, Cassiano, and Broers uh, in our first foreign to European football, and we will see if we can kick this off with a win. I'd like to think we're favourites. Um, the board expectancy is for us to get to the quarterfinals of this competition. I, I wouldn't say it's ambitious. I think we can definitely do it. Just think later on in the later rounds, clubs like Atalanta who are in this competition might give us more of a more of a, a threat. But here we go. First foray in, first highlight seems to be going to us. Cassiano and DeSantis licking up in midfield. Put the ball out to go big, not quite as accurate. Galvez into Webster. Playing the ball back nicely, but it's gone all the way back to Mamadov, Brewer, and Moreno. So we've got some good touches from some of the new boys early on. 
Latio, Moreno. I need to find a break, really, or that killer through ball. Comfortable on the ball, though, which is nice. Playing some nice little triangles. Watio's broke the line. Through he goes. Trying to dink the keeper. <laughs> and when your right back's trying to dink the keeper with his left foot, um, it gives you a bit of an indication of the things to come, perhaps. I am going to change from balance to positive because I think this is a game we should be dominant in. Again, Watio picking up the ball deep into Gleason. Watio, he's getting involved in some good areas. Gleason, I would have expected him to score from there. But things seem to be going our way at the minute as Moreno picks the ball up at the back, plays it into Webster. Rashika, who's actually starting to, I wouldn't say he's falling out of favour as Gleason thumps the ball in from a Rashika cross. Is Rashika's one of our star players. We've seen when we got here. It's been huge for us since we got here. But with the influx of attacking players we've brought in now, Rashika might actually be starting to fall away in his, his game time. But we will see. It'll take a while for these young players to embed and develop properly to become first teamers. As they play the ball round, and Mamadov stops what looked like a, an ominous breakthrough as they just one two it past our back four. Moreno and Brewer are quite strong at the back. I wouldn't expect too much to get past them. Here Brewer's on the ball now. Taking his time. DeSantis, one of our creative players, into Webster. Over the top to Gleason. And he fires in a second, but it looks like that one was offside. He is pulling it back. I don't know if it'll be VAR or just a straight chop off. Yeah, he looked off to me. As we're coming up towards half time. And an injury to Gleason. Any indication of what that might be? No, so that's a bit of a devastating blow. I think we might bring Padilla on just for some game time. Bit of a concerning injury. I'm hoping that's not um, a devastating one. We saw with the Glazius last year, just as he started to pick up a little bit of form, I think he did his cruciate ligament or he broke his leg. One of the two. And that was him out for the rest of the season. So hopefully nothing similar on this occasion. As we win the ball at the back, Padilla plays it to go big or go home. Into DeSantis. He checks back to Webster. That's a bit of a loose pass. Into Rashika. Watiao getting involved again. Cassiano swings it in. Go big or go home with a header, but it goes wide. 40 minutes to go then. I think we're going to actually up the ante and go a bit more attacking. Galvez down the left hand side a lot of chances for us today Cassiano as well good touches on the ball into Webster Padilla drilled the low one to the far corner but he couldn't quite nestle it in the onion bag looks like Go Bigs run out of a bit of fitness now early on in the season though first few games it's going to be like that as he breaks down the side into Padilla couldn't find it I mean he should have crossed it there I don't know what he was really playing at Go big comes off, Brian will come on. Chance for. And with it only being 1 0, that's what I'm kind of worried about. Rashika for Brian. I thought Go big was the one who was tired. We'll get Bruno on for some game time. Just in the final couple of minutes. So not a convincing victory. I mean, it is in terms of chances, but not in terms of goals. Good performance at the back, but let's have a look at what this injury might be. Um, it's a concerning one, especially when they're asking you after the game about his injury. Let's have a look. Oh, just a pulled calf. Leave him to the physio. Not too bad. So. Once again, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the transfer. I think a lot of them players are for the future, not so much for the instant success. But if we can stay at Norwich for two, three years, I really think we'll start to rack up some, some trophies for the cabinet. So yeah, thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to hit the like button and I'll see you next time.